Good morning everybody and welcome to Wild Earth this morning. I'm just keeping a check on what those geese are doing because they've been quite vocal this morning. So I thought we'd come down here to the dam while we have the opportunity and there is a beautiful sunrise happening just behind us. So hopefully we're going to see that sun just popping up over the back of the trees there. My name's Tara and I'm going to be your guide for this morning. Joining me on camera is Sebastian and back in car control is Craig. Um, there were a couple of hippos out, but unfortunately they have made their way back to the water as well. But they are just opposite us at the moment. But apart from that, the guinea fowl are pretty quiet. They're not really seeming that there's anything going on around here. They're not really paying too much attention to the geese. So I don't know if there's something moving around at the back there, or whether they're just joining in the dawn chorus at the moment. I'm starting to hear some of the franklins at the back there. Hmm, could be an interesting one. Oh. Our Roman nosed hippo's back. <laughs> I haven't actually had a chance to see his nose yet. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> In camera shy this morning. But you may have remembered when the uh, camera was working probably a good couple of months ago now, maybe a little bit more, that the, this hippo made a, an entrance here at Gary Dam and he was trying to mate with one of the females, I seem to remember. You can see he's got quite a, a high bridged nose. See, that one's got quite a flat nose. I wonder if that's Bob, actually. It looks like quite a small one. But Bob's just over a year old now. And Bob was born live here at Gary Dam. There's the other one just to the left. Okay, now he's getting quite insistent. Still around, huh? Yeah, the croc's still around, although this morning I don't think it's going to be out and about just yet. Good to see you, mister. Maybe we'll just sit here a couple more minutes, because so the guinea fowl is still quite quiet. So we might just see some movement. And this is where Karula has been for a couple of days, we think. She was seen two days ago and we think she was still there in the morning. There was no tracks coming out from her, from the lodge. So it may even be worth us going around the front and having a look around there. But we've got some beautiful sun rays coming through now. There we go, there's one of the Egyptian geese. The Meonostos in front, the lion ears. Maybe we can pull focus so we can have a look at the orange flowers. Yeah. <coughs> there we go. Almost looks like uh, the lion ears there. <coughs> And they have quite sweet nectar that you can actually eat. The bottom goose isn't looking anywhere in particular, but the top, the one further up, is looking over towards the lodge. If we can have a quick look, these sun rays are starting to break through now. Mm-hmm. 
people when when he pops. When he pops sing, maybe we should drop down to the hippo a little bit as well. So it's starting to display. <coughs> I wonder if this is why we've been hearing a lot of activity from the hippos as well. Apparently there's a couple of males fighting and maybe the male that's here is the winner. Maybe there's a couple of females here that he's wanting to breed with. Well, guinea fowl have flown further back but they haven't flown into a tree. Hoping maybe Karula was walking this way. Okay, now both of them are looking towards the lodge, so I think we do need to go and have a look towards the lodge, but I can see the sun is rising now. It could mean that she is moving. Good morning, Teresa. Welcome aboard to you this morning. And I've not heard the plant being called. Are you asking about the Leonostis? Leonotis. And asking if it was. So you have to just repeat it, Craig? just missed what the plant was called <coughs> if you can just repeat it but I haven't heard it being called that before it, its other name is wild dacher which is I think what Teresa called it wanting to know uh, Craig can you just repeat what she, which uh, name she was asking about Uh, lionette, lionette plant. Sorry, Teresa, just popped out of my head as I was saying about it. Lionette plant. I've not heard it being called a lionette plant before. So the other name I, I do know of is lion ears. It could be one of the, the many names. Okay, let's see if we can get around to the back by the lodges, by the rooms. Misjudged a little bit where the sun was going to come up. I hope, hope it was going to come up between the trees. <laughs> Good morning, Anne. Yeah, my frog is trying to uh, to be 
be released this morning. Good morning to you. How long is a hippo supposed to live for? It's around 30, 40 years if I can remember rightly. Fairly, fairly well aged animal. And they do mature quite slowly. It can be, well, it actually depends on the size of the hippo. Rather than the age of the hippo. So if the hippo increases in size quite rapidly, then it will mature rapidly. But they may not mature until they're about 8 or 12 sometimes. Maybe even 15, depending on how big they, they actually are. But they can mature as early as 4 or 5. Wow, it's a little bit misty here. <coughs> and just going back to um, Teresa's question, <coughs> apparently the reason why it's called wild duffer, I think, well, it is smoked. And it has been used in the past by tribes. And apparently, fairly recently, they've done some research and they found that there is no hallucinogenic properties. But the reason why it's called wild docker is because the young plants actually have some resemblance to the, the other type of plant, the other docker. I think that's where it actually gets its other name, but I, I prefer the lion ears. It's such a pretty plant. And there's a lot of it at the moment. So I didn't know about this until fairly recently that it didn't have any, any properties whatsoever. Okay, we're just gonna take a Voo Voo Road down towards the road, down towards the rooms. <clears throat> and have a look by the rooms. And hopefully we can let the frog in my throat free. It's quite a tongue twister. And oddly enough, if you were on drive with me last night and we saw those clouds building, we actually did get some rain and it's really quite bizarre this time of year. And we had a little splashing just before we woke up this morning, could actually hear it on the roof. And now we've got blue sky above us, but the clouds are all, all around us. And looking quite pretty. And I can't remember the Shona word, actually. The Shona word. I'll have to try and look it up again. found towards what well, in Botswana and Shona people. And their word actually is to do with the sweetness of the nectar. And you'll find a lot of birds, like sunbirds and things, drinking the nectar from the plant as well as children quite often. Misty down here still. There hasn't been uh, any guests in the lodge for the last couple of days, and that's why I think Karula's been taking advantage. Maybe deeming it a little bit safer than a ride out in the bush but she has been known to leave her cubs and for anyone that's joining us for the first time Karula is our resident female leopard <clears throat> and the maintenance manager walked into her a couple of days ago here and the cubs were playing on the deck it was at room number four 
<laughs> I wonder how many people are going to come over and want to stay in room number four now. It's actually quite funny, there's a lot of, these rooms do see a lot of animals. You remember we've had the lion sitting right, right by room eight, which is just here. <clears throat> and I think Induna was hunting an impala by room one. Because of playing on the deck at room four, the ruler walked on towards room three. And with it being in a drainage line, a lot of animals do come through here. They do utilize it. The elephants, the hippo. You may see hippo out of water. We actually did have a hippo out of water just before we went live. But they're very shy. Okay, I did hear the Franklins calling. I wonder if these Franklins were the ones that were calling earlier. Could really do with the monkeys, actually. Monkeys are very sharp eyed animals, and they do tend to see a lot of the leopards. have any luck here we'll head back towards quarantine area and maybe try and catch up with the baboons as they start waking up our Egyptian geese have gone I'm not seeing any tracks here A couple of people were asking what I meant on the blog when I said Karula treed Safari, her mother, the other day. And I just meant that Karula actually chased her mother up into a tree. Well, I'm not seeing anything here. Judging by where the geese was. Oh no, the geese are still sitting there. We're in the tree further back. They were looking down this way, and I wondered if it was around here. We were seeing the movement. Yeah, they're still calling. And still both looking down this way. So she had a clash with her mother a few days ago by Baboon Pan. Safari was actually by Baboon Pan. She usually has her territory over towards Arethusa in the west. But when I went to the guides meeting, they said that she's now starting to take over White Cloth's old territory. And I wonder if her daughters are putting pressure on her because she is getting an old lady now. Maybe they're pressurizing her and reducing her territory. But it's quite interesting. I think, just like humans, they have the good days and bad days. And I think sometimes you, you may get these leopards coming together and they don't really bother each other. I did hear Karuda met uh, Shadow, who we know as Tingana. And they were sat opposite each other. They weren't even fighting or anything. And yet, other times, she has really laid into her daughter. And she's really given her quite a good beating and saying, get out of my territory. But then, probably two weeks ago, they were just sat there a few meters away from each other and not doing anything. 
So again, it just goes to show, behaviour is not clear cut. It can be one thing one day and one thing another. Oh, I see. And the car looks through there. I thought the Impala was looking up there. Thanks, Penny. Saying the uh, there is a white, a white version of the wild ducker called the lion's tail. Over in Durban Way. Thanks, Penny. Good to hear from you this morning. white version of the Leonotus Leonora. I couldn't remember the last part of the, the uh, Latin name actually. Leonora. I think it's actually the Leonotus is the lion ear. That's what actually, actually where the lion ear comes from is the part of the Latin name. And there is also another one, a, a smaller one which is a different genus and it's actually called Acrotome and it doesn't grow as high. So some of the, uh, the lion ears are growing sort of this sort of height up the ground, whereas Acrotome tends to grow maybe about 40, 40 centimetres, I think, off the ground. Also white, little white balls. <coughs> oh, beautiful big kudu, and there's another one just here. Oh, disappearing into the bush. I think it was the, the one running across the road. Disturbed the other one just standing here. They haven't gone too far, they're just here. Absolutely magnificent bulls. Okay, that's what's going on. He's also very impressive. Can you see this one through here? Not quite. The other one started moving towards this bull here on the right. And he turned around and just dropped his head slightly, which was a warning to the other bull. Hey, don't get too close to me. I thought they were going to actually try and start fighting, but I think the other one has decided against it. This bull does look much bigger than he did. Beautiful spiral horns on them. And actually, kudu horns would have been used to uh, summon little villages to a tribal meeting. They'd actually take the keratin part of the horn, they'd take the bone out of the, the bony core out of the middle and drill a hole in the other end and they'd actually blow through it and it makes this very deep booming sound. It is quite a... I wouldn't say a, me a melody, but it's, it's definitely one of those bush sounding calls and that can carry for quite a distance so a good way to summon everybody to a tribal meeting
going into his third turn there. And there he goes. Male kudu. Females generally don't have horns, although there has been one, one or two occasions where they, for some reason, genetics have got it wrong, and they may grow a small set of horns. That's very, very rarely seen. Lynn, fantastic to hear. Apparently, Lynn was staying in room four and she was told to be careful. There was a leopard, a leopardess in the drainage line. It's funny, I don't use that word very often. It's actually quite a nice, a nice word for the female leopard, leopardess. She was in the drainage line and apparently it was Karula with the first cubs. And I have heard she used to leave. Apparently, uh, she used to leave the cubs underneath this uh, the slats for the platform of the room, or the viewing deck. They actually have a viewing deck, a little plunge pool. Especially in the summer, you can sit in your plunge pool and watch the animals go by. She uh, should actually leave the cubs underneath the platforms of the rooms. You don't tend to see the lions getting too close to the lodge, and maybe that's why. Because it kind of reduces that possibility. Oh, our geese are flying on now. Although hyenas do come round to lodges if they can raid any of the bin content. I think a hyena came sniffing round ours last night. Luckily the bin was empty, it pulled it over though. It must have had the smell of the rubbish. I thought, ooh, let me try in here. But we'd already emptied the bin. Thanks for sending through some more information on the Leonotis penny. Appreciate it. I'll have a read of that when I get back. See the starlings through the, the gap in the tree there. Virtual starlings there. There must be some insects in there, both of them are actually. Picking at the branches. I just saw a pie kingfisher. Oh no, our geese are back again. Okay, I 
I just need to pull back a little bit because there's something going on with these hippos as well. You might be able to see the pie kingfisher. Yep. The hippo is porpoising again, throwing his body out of the water. Okay, now the guinea fowl are going. Okay, let's go and see what the guinea fowl are shouting about. The hippo's gone under water now. Keep that thought in mind, hippo, we'll come back. But if the guinea fowl are now calling, we need to react. And maybe while we were driving around there, maybe somebody popped out this side. And we left the guinea fowl somewhere around here. Sounds like they're all up ahead now. There they are, they're in this tree. So if they're in the tree... Oh, my... oh there she is, there she is! <laughs> and the cubs are there, awesome! Knew something was going on. <laughs> Thanks, guinea fowl. Hello, lady. <laughs> Uh -huh. So we say we have he has a good feeling today. So I wonder she must have come through the front of the lodge. Good morning. And this is our lady of Juma. And the female cubs just next to her. I can see just to the right of her eye, she's got that dark line. If she turns around again, she's too busy watching the guinea fowl now. There you go. That's a little male cub. <laughs> little females coming out to have a look now. Look. She's going to go into the tree, or maybe she's going to claw the tree, but she certainly looks interested. Or maybe she's just going to send Mark. But unfortunately, her cover has been blown by the guinea fowl. It's coming as well. Oh, where are you going, Karula? Stations, we've got uh, Karula and the Mampin Pans just by Gary Dam. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Sorry, I've been off the radio this morning. Okay, so the thanks. Also, we're in Peter Kayak, and a lot of people running around. Can I join you to that, Karula? 
affirmative. Okay, I'm gonna move. Let's see if we can pick up with our lady. And this this le leopard is really quite special. And I think you know she's just got such a charisma about her. And I think Peter also commented, and, I, and he was very true. She has actually helped to bring so many people together because everybody wants to know how she's doing and how her cubs are doing. And I think she's a very big part of a lot of people's lives all over the world. And quite a number of people have seen on Drive have said to me, she is one of the reasons why she, they actually came to, to, to do safari here, to actually see Karula. And hopefully if we can get into a nice position, we might be able to see. I'll just stand by here. So maybe she didn't come around the lodge at all. Maybe that's why the geese were... They were looking down towards the lodge. And actually, just looking at them on the termite mound, they look quite peaceful. And maybe as the guinea fowl started walking up there, this one of them suddenly spotted her. And now the geese are looking at her. But what makes Karula so impressive, not only is she such an efficient hunter, and I think she's actually taking her cubs out and about more and more when she's hunting, and I think she's actually taking the cubs close to where she's going to try and hunt, and maybe hopefully from where they are they might be able to see her tactics. And she really... Okay, we have no guess. I'm wondering, we, sh we should be able to come in from the other side. Unfortunately, we can't fit underneath the, the wire here. I think the cubs have gone through the meta on that side. She's still there. Let's give it a go. Maybe we can give... the manager the heads up if we're actually okay because she's actually walking along the road towards the rooms and I know there's another road that leads down and with there not being any guests then we should be okay to go in maybe Craig can do that for us let's check that we're okay She just walked down uh, this road here, so it looks like she's carrying on, so maybe the car park side might be better. Okay. Maybe if we go in this side. Uh, 
I don't think anyone's out and about. There's no guests in the lodge at the moment. Okay. Unless you can just drop the aerial. Can you see her, Franklin, or are you shouting about us? There's a little road that actually goes down between the rooms here, which we have used before. she has gone into possibly even room one she actually looked like she was going to go down to room one i think she might still be right by, by room one i think so I'm going to try the drainage line again. This is the road that we have used and she actually walked right down here in between the rooms before. But I think she is still that side, but I want to try and go in from the drainage line side again. The fact that she's walked towards here is really starting to make me think. I'm going to see if I can open this up. But maybe she was sat on that termite mound for quite a while. It just goes to show how useful these animals can be though. Because we actually didn't drive past that way. Funnily enough, we came down the other way this morning. So she was in the sight of the goose the whole time. It's funny because everyone does seem to work together against the predators, yet everyone giving alarm calls to say, hey, there's a predator here, keep a lookout. And it's so that everyone can keep the predator in the sights. And the guinea fowl, it was quite funny because the guinea fowl didn't really take 
take them on and they actually were flying towards Karuna. Remember I said to you that when we were sitting down by the water, I said to you, the guinea fowl weren't calling, they're were actually flying further up and they're actually flying towards Karuna. So this is where she actually was and this is where I thought she might just come out. But maybe she's actually just in a thick bush there. Yeah, I think maybe come round the front, Andrew. Um, I've just got visual of another man to one just in the trees. And here comes the other cub out on the platform again. I think it might be a bit difficult to see the other one in the tree. See, next to his right eye, there's no dark lines at all. Very distinctive from his sister. Is there any station at Voyatello at the moment? Staff should be coming in soon. Definitely want to warn them that they've got some leopard hanging around. Otherwise, that's going to be quite a big wake-up call for them. Oh, and there's his sister. So the two of them were there. And I think Karula's there as well. You can just about see the tail. Mm -hmm. So that's where they are. Can you see them okay? Yeah? Let's see if I can try and move back a little bit. Maybe the height will give us... A Sorry? Oh, I was going to just move back a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can... Yeah, more than welcome. If the height's going to give us, hopefully it will give us a little bit of an advantage. Say if you can see them. Oh, there they are. Oh, see if I can just pull back. Can you see? Yeah? yeah. Just tell me if you can't see, hey? <laughs> oh, and there's Karula. You can see her now quite nicely. Oh, this is fantastic. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. It's just so wonderful to see her. Have you heard anyone else out on drive? Uh, no, just you and me. Yeah. <laughs> still there on the right as well. Yeah, a little male checking out room four now. is going to go onto the deck.
Are you going to move back? Or are you going to stay here? Oh, okay. Do you mind if we move back? Okay. <laughs> I think she can keep quite a good advantage point from here as well even during the heat of the day although generally speaking in the height of the summer they'll generally keep their movements to when it's cooler so generally towards the night the dusk and the dawn but it's not a strict rule and what we have seen with Karuna is she tends to wait until the heat of the day to move the cubs and maybe she finds she's messing around on the deck again. So we'll come back this side and have a look at what she's doing. <laughs> but no, I'm going to lie down here. Oh, no, that is the male. They must have got mixed up as they walked over. That's the male and then the female. So she is actually getting further and further away from Karula. That's quite interesting. So when we followed them onto the deck, that's uh, where Karula was sitting. That must have been where the swap over happened and carried on through. And welcome back, everybody. And we're still with Karula, that the cubs are being still quite active. So I thought we'd stay with them a little while longer for the time being. <laughs> Unless she's going to go and sit down now. Maybe we just need to pull back a little bit. Karula's just sitting at the back there. Can you, you can't see her there. Let's try and move back a little bit. Him. Over. Him. Maybe they've decided actually they want some rest now. Can you see her from there? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see if the little male's going to come back out again. Otherwise, we're going to have another look at Karula. Now you might be wondering why will leopards be around the lodge like this? I mean, surely it smells of humans and leopards should be scared of humans. And generally leopards are, especially if they're living in areas where they are uh, unfortunately shot at because it's believed that they take livestock. So generally leopards are very, very elusive. 
and they avoid human contact at all costs. But here on the game reserve, they obviously don't have that problem. Um, we respect their space and we try and give them their space and if they want to come to us that's fine. But they get used to the humans and they get used to the fact that humans aren't going to harm them. And especially Karula, there's, there's something about her and, and she's, she's very, very relaxed around vehicles and very relaxed around people and especially this particular lodge as well. She spends a lot of time around here and obviously she's teaching that to her cubs and that's being passed on to her cubs to, to you know, not fear these places. And I think Safari may have been the same, sort of passing that on to Karula. And that's where a lot of their behavior around humans comes from. If the mother is scared, then the cub's going to be scared. Whereas if the mother's relaxed, then the cub's going to be relaxed and like, well, I don't need to, to fear. And obviously if that respectful boundary is still there, I mean, obviously we don't leave cubs coming to the vehicle and jumping on the vehicle and things like that, because otherwise that that line it gets crossed and that's where you start to get problems if they get too used to humans and too used to to vehicles in that they use the vehicles and jump on the vehicles and then there's not really a, a large step between that and actually jumping on guests which obviously we don't want so you've always got to keep that line keep that respect so that's why we don't try and interact with them that's why if if the cubs they, they can come up to the vehicle, they can take an interest, but uh, if they try and climb onto the vehicle or anything like that, then obviously we'd need to to dissuade them. Now that might be just starting the vehicle up or just moving slightly, but it's, it's to basically keep them alive at the end of the day. Because if they get to that stage where they're jumping on the vehicles and they're getting too used to people in that sense, then unfortunately they become a problem animal. So there is always that respectful boundary that both humans and these animals need to keep. And you can see it works extremely well. I mean, Kula is quite happy to walk past the vehicle. And I don't think we're going to get any movement out of the little male at the moment. So maybe we should go and have another look at Karula. But if they're going to be settling down around here... Just to move on, I'm sure it's going to move. Oh, the other cubs up and about. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it there. I just saw movement behind the bush. <laughs> Hi, Carl. Welcome on board this morning. I'm wondering if the leopards can jump over the wall into the lodge and eat the tourists. Well, 
Carl, she's actually in the lodge. There's no wall, the only problem animals, and that's when they can become quite a danger to humans. Rather keep to herself and rather stick to the drainage line or stick to areas that the humans aren't going to be interrupting her. She may walk past the lodge, she may walk around the rooms at night, but otherwise she will keep away from the lodge if people are there. And that's why at night you're asked not to walk by yourself. And there'll be some people that think they know better and they'll still walk. And I've had a couple of people at my old place that I said to them, look, the lions can and do come into camp at night. Uh, you must be escorted. And I got told that I was being utterly ridiculous and that this, he was going to walk. But uh, generally people are quite accommodating and kind of understand that we are not just saying it just, just to sound big and bold, but it does happen. We are on the animal's land at the end of the day. We are loaning their property. This is their home. And we don't have any fences around, around the lodges. And so there's only couple of strands of electric fencing here just to try and keep the elephants from damaging the lodge. But I did say that leopards can be active during the day sometimes, depends on how they feel, but generally they are active more at night. Look at that. Ooh. I think the cubs actually been reprimanded enough times now that the flattening of the ears and the showing of the teeth means do not bother me. She goes. Where are you going, Karula? Let's see if we can pull back again. She might be heading onto the deck. She might be. There's a lot of commotion by the Egyptian geese again. I think there was another Egyptian goose that came over. Flew over. There's a lot of oxpeckers flying over and I wonder if there's a buffalo or something out, out the back here. I just want to stay here just in case she's going to play with a cub there. <laughs> Are you going to go through? Hi, Larry. <laughs> Wanting to know how many rooms there are here at Boyd Teller Lodge and other pools. You have a plunge pool, which is actually what they were drinking out of. Just on the little viewing deck here. Oh, she is. She's just going. I'm just seeing her. She's right at the back there. I think she is going to go through the lodge again. I know she's coming back out. I'm hoping no one left the room door open so she's gone inside. <laughs> Can you imagine? But there's eight rooms in total. 
each room has its If one of these curbs decides to go and sit on a sun lounger, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to take a picture of that. It's actually just sitting behind the sun lounger at the moment. There we go. Oh, there's, oh no, yeah, it was cool again. Hi Elizabeth, just trying to think now, excuse me, one of them is darker, let me just see if I can move back because he's actually taken quite a long drink there. looks a little bit darker okay this is a little female and if you look just above her whisker line oh she's turning her head again but so on her right eye she's got that long line down by her right eye but she also has two spots above each other above her whisker line and a little v upside down v and you're saying that the little male looks a little bit darker a little bit redder in color I'm just trying to remember now because there is one that looks a little bit darker and I think it I think it is the male, if I can remember rightly. I know that they've been in front of me but I haven't kind of seen both of them side.
Nico, we missed your porpoising. Throwing his body up out of the water and splashing down. I doubt that was for crew, that was more to do with what they were doing. Ooh. All three of them there. Pretty sure Bob is amongst them. I'm a pie kingfisher flu. Let's go up and see if anything's happening with the gallery again before we head down towards <coughs> And that station he didn't come over. drive down here and she's sitting down there. I wonder, yeah. I wonder no, how long. No, yeah, we drove that way. I'd love to know what her movements were though. I really would love to know what her movements were. Where she was just sitting there watching us. have gone already. Where have the baboons gone? Chill in the air. Why the chill? It looks like there's more clouds building.
amazing how quickly it becomes a two-track, how many vehicles have driven along this road. Everybody might be sleeping by now. Oh no, I think somebody is there. Nope. Dog. Just in case I'm sleeping that side. But it is quite warm. We are already sleeping. <laughs> no, everybody is well and truly sleeping. There's plenty of holes here. Always worth a try. Well, let's head off into ooh, into the east. See if we can catch up with a rhino and a baby. I love this time of year. All the young animals. We pass. <laughs> Good to hear from you. I'm 
to know do my family ever come and visit and what they think about me doing this. They've actually been extremely supportive of me. I know it must be very hard, and it is actually very hard for me as well, being away from my family. I know my mum does find it very hard. But hats off to her, she's been very supportive of me. And uh, I was really hoping to try and find some elephants last night, because <laughs> every time she watches, she, elephants are, are her big love. And every time she watches, I never find elephants. So now I'll try and watch you tomorrow. Well, this was yesterday or the day before. So I said, okay, cool, I'll try and find some elephants. And the only time that I've found elephants when she's watching is when I get a flat tire and the elephants go away and I can't follow them. <laughs> so maybe at some stage. Um, but they think it's absolutely wonderful what I'm doing. And they have come to visit once when I first came out to be a guide. We actually spent Christmas out here and I was working but my family were there so I was actually driving my family around which was great and uh, had a couple of very interesting sightings with them, especially lions with the cubs, the cubs are about the same age as gorilla's cubs are now and one of the older cubs, she was probably about a year and a half old so she's still, she, she was still trying to learn about the world and she she picked up on the scent and she started walking towards the vehicle and I didn't think anything of it I was like, okay cool fine you know she was being quite quite inquisitive and we waited for all the lion family to come out of the, the ditch which is where they were sitting and all the other vehicles had come we didn't really get a nice view of them and after all the other vehicles had left the lions came out the big male came out and the cubs jumped on him and started playing with him and it really was quite a magical sighting to say this female started picking up a scent and she walked towards the vehicle and she was kind of sort of doing this and then all of a sudden she stopped and she just looked wide-eyed I was thinking what on earth is going on and she sat down and she couldn't decide whether she was going to pounce you could see her bum kind of wiggling a little bit in, in the way that cats do when they're just about to pounce but she was kind of she was wiggling but then she was kind of backing off as well it was the most funniest thing to see it because she just couldn't decide what to do and when she was sort of doing the bum wiggling I was like no 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 that, that's too that's too close uh, for her to, to be doing that sort of thing to us and she was probably about a meter a meter and a half away from us as I say it was it wasn't the full bum wiggle but there was enough of it there so I just sort of said hey and she kind of looked at me but as I was doing that, I looked around to see what she was looking at. And my mum was sitting just behind me. And she was actually looking directly at my mum. And uh, as I say, as soon as I said, hey, she turned away. And my mum also turned away. And it suddenly dawned on me, my mum was wearing these huge sunglasses. They were quite, quite big lenses. Hello, buffalo. I'm looking at the dung, and there's a buffalo on the side of the road. My love for dumb, what can I say? And it actually dawned on me that it was because she was staring at the cub with these huge sunglasses on. The cub was so unsure of what to do. Where do we want to be? Maybe we should try around the other side because he's walking that way. Because this, this creature with these huge eyes was staring at it and staring at a cat is a direct threat and she obviously felt very uncomfortable because of my mum with these big sunglasses didn't even dawn on me didn't even register and I've been looking for that behavior and I have heard of something similar since then also with very big sunglasses with younger animals with younger lions we've got a big hole there I think we've had an aardvark around here there's a big hole in front I think another big one to the right. Oh no, mud wallow. But there has been an aardvark around. Hello, Mr. Buffalo. What's wrong with your ear? Just gotta be careful, we're not gonna sink here. I say, I've not seen it in some of the larger animals. I think the larger animals kind of get used to tourists and what they wear and stuff, but. So the younger animals are like, what on earth is going on? 
Yeah, it looks like he's got a bit of a cut on his ear. Oh, okay. That's what he thinks of us then. So you can imagine that was uh, that's a story that gets told over Christmas to family. <laughs> okay, Mr. Buffalo, we'll leave you alone then. Apparently, he wants his own company. Not interested in ours this morning. A fleeting glimpse. But I'd love for them to come out and visit here at Juma. Unfortunately, at that time, we only had one herd of elephants and they were very, very shy. And we spotted them from quite far away on, on the rocks. I said, you see those little grey lumps there? That's the elephants. And we even took a drive down towards Pilansburg, which is a, a national park where you can drive around. And that's famous for its elephants. And could I find an elephant? No. So I'd love to be able to show a, an elephant like we see the elephants. Coming right up to the vehicle and just being so relaxed. So maybe one day. have to make sure I don't get another flat tire. Something's telling me we should check out Twin Dams. I don't know why. I'm wanting to go this way. Maybe we should... Where's your feeling saying we should check out? Where's your feeling saying we should check? Hello, monkey. Where's the rest of your troop? Oh, there's another monkey up in the tree. I'm actually at the wrong angle now. Oh, there's a little baby over there as well. <laughs> Little black faces. Quite a long tail. And you may have noticed when we were with Karula how long her tail was. And you may notice with these monkeys too, much longer tails compared to their body than maybe even their baboons. But the arboreal creatures or the climbers the tree dwellers tend to have much longer tails for balance than the terrestrial counterparts. You can see the agility of these. Maybe if we can swing over to cover you on them. There's a couple playing at the back there. I don't know, it's looking very blown out on my screen. It is unusual to find the monkeys on the floor, although they will cross big gaps like this this road here. They do they do need to come down onto the floor to to 
across the road. So otherwise, if they can, they'll utilize the trees, which is exactly what these little ones are doing now. Very agile. Another little one looking at us. <laughs> they got some nice ones there in the tree, in the fork of the tree there. Oh, <laughs> gone. <laughs> so maybe time to look at this one here, just off to this. It's checking us out. And again, just as in baboons, their facial expression is very important. And they do have the, those white eyebrows, or the pink eye, uh, the white eyelids, which can be used in communication. And I think even that black face has a lot to do with, with the communication. And it may also help with the glare of the sun. You tend to find a lot of diurnal creatures. They have a lot of black on the face so that they don't get the glare into their eyes, whereas the nocturnal species may have white into their eyes. And the theory behind it is that they can see better because they might be able to increase the light reflected from the moon and the stars and things like that. So if you see underneath the eyes of the lion, the leopard, they have that white patch. But on meerkats, they also have black faces, black across the eyes. These monkeys. There could be some truth in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see the baby in the tree opposite? Copying the adult. There he is, right in the middle of the screen. So you can see that little pink around, around the eyes. <laughs> I was asking for monkeys earlier because they do have quite a distinctive alarm call when it comes to, to uh, leopards and seeing leopards and if they're calling it does mean there's something out and about and if they are calling they're giving a specific call if you know those calls, you can actually determine what it is that they're calling about. And we learned something the other day. There was some monkeys around by the lodge, and they were calling, but it wasn't an insistent call, just like the geese this morning. It was every so often. Well, we, we had a look around. We couldn't find anything. But they were calling throughout the day. I thought, this is really odd. So we went and had a look in the afternoon and actually about three meters from where we turned around Induna was lying flat, 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 flat. So the monkey obviously could see a little bit of him but he wasn't in a threatening position so the monkey was still saying, hey, he's there but he, you don't need to worry about him too much at the moment but just remember he's there. Very, very interesting. But if it's insistent like the guinea fowl this morning having Karula so close to the guinea fowl. If you hear these guys calling, 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 it does mean that there is something get very close by and in a threatening posture, whether it's just standing up and looking or moving by. Okay, monkeys, I'm gonna leave you. Nice to see them. You don't often see them on drive.
Maybe that's why we had to come down towards Twin Downs. Maybe it was to see the monkeys. Hi, Joe. Good morning to you. Wanting to know, do the monkeys clash with the Gary gang and are they smaller? Um, do you mean smaller in size or do you mean smaller in troop number? So they are smaller in size, they're much smaller. So the monkeys are about body size, well, maybe for an adult, about this big. Baboons, you're looking maybe about this big when they sit. So if, they, if you can imagine them sitting, the head to the bum is probably about this big. Monkey's about this big. So big size difference. In fact, little Evelyn at the moment, no, let's say Huey. Little Huey is about the same size as a vervet monkey, a big vervet monkey. But troop size, the uh, vervet monkeys are bigger. Even this troop are bigger. But they do clash, they do I saw them outside FC yesterday, actually. The, uh, I think it was Huey trying to play with the, the, mon the vervet monkeys. And I think, actually, the vervet monkeys have made found a bit of food there, and I think the baboons actually chased them off. But, uh, Huey was, was trying to play with them. And I have been told by Graham that he has seen some of the younger baboons playing with the vervet monkeys. Occasionally they can get damaged by the baboons as well. So maybe some of the adults, if they're eating something, they may, if they get hold of them, they may actually harm them. So again, depending on the situation. But I'd love to see them playing, I must admit. our vervet monkeys that we were to see. A cheetah cut line. We may be lucky with some rhino. I haven't seen rhino for ages. Let's see how they're doing. Good morning, are there any stations out on drive this morning? Ooh, hippo. One hippo, a treehouse dam. Not treehouse, we're at twin dams. I don't often see a hippo here. You see it just past the, the fence there. I don't know if you can see the water lilies just to the left, but there's some blue water lilies. Remember we had just further up on Twin Dams, the, the water lilies are looking more white, but these are the blue water lilies and these ones do ha actually have the blue tint. And these blossoms are actually used at weddings as well. But as humans, we can eat the fruit and we can eat the ribosome, the root. I 
I've never tried one myself though. And I was getting mixed up with the pondweed. Apparently it's the pondweed. The Vata Blumakis. Vata Blumakis. That get canned and sold and you can apparently very very tasty. Herman's told me I have to have a Vata Blumaki Poiki. Which is a very nice poiki. Poiki being uh, slow cooked over a fire. You usually have a bit of meat, a few vegetables. And if you've seen a couple of fireside chats, you may have seen the big pot that we had on the fire making the poiki for dinner. I'm seeing an animal. Who am I seeing? I'm seeing the rump of somebody. I think it was an impala. Yes, it was an impala. Two impala. Males being very relaxed over there. So I don't think there's too much activity here. Sounds well. I think we're going to have to move. Get ahead of this vehicle coming down the road. <laughs> Hi, Alan. <laughs> Good to hear from you. Hope you're well. Wanting to know is the Maruna tree the only tree that's producing fruits in the area? The only one that we see often that produces fruits. The jackalberry produces fruits. The torchwood produces fruits. In fact, the torchwood apparently can help cure bilharzia. And it also, for some reason, the pulp will kill off the snails who are a host, an intermittent host of the parasites. Also used, and that's actually one of the reasons why it gets called a torchwood. It gets used in torches. You can make a torch from it and set fire to it. I think it's actually the oil from the seed, if I remember rightly. I'm just having a look at some of the tracks here almost looked a bit like a lion, but it's a hyena. It is a hyena. Big hyena though, huge hyena. I'd like to meet her in a dark night. I think it might be floppy ear though. They're not registering too nicely to show you. I have found some sour plum trees, which are really tasty. Quite bright orange. But the orange, the, the actual flesh is a little bit bitter, which is why they call it a sour plum. But once you get past that, the nut inside is very, very tasty. Yeah, past the flesh to the nut. And also, I've, I still haven't tried a Maruda nut ask you about nuts as well but the nut from the maruda fruit also very tasty let's see what else have I found oh and the monkey orange we didn't have a monkey orange and it's gone we're not too sure where it went so I'll have to try and find another monkey orange for you you can eat them you have to wait until they're ripe, otherwise you will have some problems. Oh, we have some tracks, fresh tracks, of rhino heading over there. Rhino is lying down here. Though. Maybe it's just here. There it is. 
Very, very fresh tracks. Yeah, you can come over here though. You can see it through there. You might be able to just see the body. Huh? Yeah, it's not it's not gonna be a great view, but just to show you. If you can see it, just say where you can see it through the bushes there. Too far back now. Can you not see it through there? I can see him through there. Just yeah. If, if we can just zoom in and just have a look, just to show you, is there? Let me show you how well a rhino can hide. Two two and a half tons. You just about to see the movement at the back there. I think he's gone too far now. Oh well, there he goes, but nice fresh, fresh, fresh tracks. You can maybe have a look to see where he was lying down. I'm, drop. I'm not going to be able to get out and show you, but maybe we can just have a look on the side here. If we can just drop the camera over the side, maybe, because he's not too far away from us. We won't be able to get out and point the track. But maybe we can just drop the camera over the side and you'll be able to see. So you can actually see, like we had yesterday, this is what was confusing me a little bit. That you may be able to see patches where where the skin is actually indented into the into the soil, but it's it's not like it was yesterday. Yesterday we had quite long almost scale marks and that's why I think it really was a python. I think Craig also said it looked like a python track this morning. But you can just about see maybe some of the feet tracks as well. I think maybe if I can squeeze out this side. Let me try and do that. So he is on that side. I should be sheltered. So here, you can see where the body's been lying. And here too. And then we've got the actual footprint just here. And the toe is just here. Another footprint there. Another one. This is actually where he must have got up. And his back foot went into here. Even a big hyena walking past here not too long ago. Here's the hyena track just here. So we've got the two lobes of the back pad and the half moon shaped toes. You can even see little claw marks there in here. This was the back pad, slightly smaller than the front pad because of the huge front part of a hyena and that small back. That's why you get this huge in difference in size with the front track and the back track. If you ever wanted to see a rhino sleeping spot, this is it. the east, sorry, the west of Cheetah Cut Line. Okay. Cool. Are we good 
to go. Yep. Oh, just a little bit too behind. They've been a few minutes earlier. If he came from there, maybe there's another couple of rhinos up here. Who knows? If you can imagine the way a dog sits, I love the way that rhinos actually look like a dog when they sit. They'll actually put the, the rump down on the ground first and then the front goes down, but sometimes they'll actually just sit so the rump is just on the ground and then they literally will sit that they look like a dog. It's a two and a half ton animal. They're actually very gentle creatures, I love rhino. Well, a lot of time for a rhino. I do wonder what the hyena was doing there. A lot of movement by the hyena down here. Anyone trying to follow us on the map? We're at Cheetah Cut Line now. Right on the southern side. I joined with Gary Main. Ooh, lots of African monarchs around. I don't know if you're going to be able to see him too nicely. Oh, there he goes. Why that breasted roller calling? Sitting just in the way of the sun. Now if you're wondering why we couldn't follow the rhino, he was right on our southern boundary and he crossed over. Animals don't have boundaries, but we do. Something fun happened here. Very, very light tracks registering. Lots of hyena though. Slender tail mongoose just crossed the road. Just up ahead. I wonder if he's going to come back out again. Usually, very difficult to 
catch on camera. A slender mongoose, should I say. Is it going to come out? Okay, we'll just stop here because you never know. It looked like he was following something just up on the left hand side of the road. I think it was actually following something onto that part of the road. No, maybe not. I'm going into the bush. Let's have a look through him just moving around in the bush here. A snake trap from yesterday. So the rhino may come back this afternoon, a bit twin dance. He generally makes that bit of a circuit, crosses over and then comes back. Maybe this afternoon we might have a look and see a rhino. So, for the last few minutes, where should we go? Either go Buffalo Dam via 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 Wari Pan or Nyala Road South. What do you reckon? Nyala Road South or Buffalo Dam? Nyala Road South. Oh no, there's my snake track. It was my footprint that I saw yesterday. <laughs> and the snake track that we saw this. That must be a big python. Big python. I think he must have just been basking on the road, and that's why it looks so funny. The track. And the scales, they usually have very thick scales in their belly, which helps them, them often dig them into the ground. So as they're moving, it anchors them. But these scales, the lines, scales were quite thin. When a crocodile sits, you tend to get the hashed so lines going that way and then lines going that way from the belly. My first thought was possibly a crocodile crossing the road. For some reason, I don't know where the dams are on this side, you see. It could be he was crossing over to get to another dam. So they will go over land. We have found crocodile tracks over Gary, Maine. When I 
was looking at it, I couldn't find any footprints. Then it was that sort of body, body movement towards the end of the road. So unfortunately, I'd actually chopped off half of it with my tyres. So I'd actually driven over it before I realised it was there. to stop for a track that you're not sure about trying to think about the possibilities about these clouds building again. A lot of them building off in the distance there. Hopefully, hopefully they'll hold off. Ah, and if anybody has never met a marula tree before, here we go. This is a marula tree just here. I'm asking about the marula trees. One of the only ones that bear fruit around here. If I can see a torchwood, I'll try and show you a torchwood as well before we go. Otherwise I'll have to wait until the next drive. 
It's almost as if this is how you sort of got told to remember the bark. It's almost as if someone has shot golf balls at the bark and you see these indents, these round indents in the bark. And some of them even fall off. And apparently, uh, if I can remember which way round it is now, I'll have to double check. But the rounder it is, I think it's the male that's round and the female is elongated. These um, segments on the bark. But I, I could be wrong, it could be the other way around. I need to find a tree with not some fruit underneath it, so it actually could be the other way around. Maybe it's the male, because I'm not seeing any evidence of nuts being around here. But it's a subtle difference, and I actually haven't checked it out completely. If you do get male and female trees, so we need to test that theory out. Should have done that while it was fruiting. Never mind. Next year. There's always next year. So it could be a bush myth. It could be true. There is another monkey. After me saying we don't often see monkeys, there is another monkey. There goes. There's one in the tree there. Just hanging <laughs> very awkwardly, actually. Can you see it eating the pods? Yeah. Pods of the acacia tree. See, using the back back feet to grasp hold of the branches. And you may notice, actually, at the end of the tail, maybe we can. Oh, tail's just hidden behind the branch. But if you look at old world monkeys, which is what these are, the old world monkeys are found in Asia and Africa. The new milk. New World monkeys in South America and a lot of those monkeys will have a bear patch at the end of their tail. So it's a prehensile tail, they have the ability to use it as a fifth limb so they can wrap their tail around and hold onto a branch and actually hold the whole body off of that tail. But the Old World monkeys don't have that. And the old world monkeys tend to have a much flatter face than that of the new, mon the new world monkeys. So the new world, the, the spider monkeys, and what else have we got? Capuchins, I think, come from there. Squirrel monkeys, they have quite a, a long nose, a long face. Obviously the baboons are one of the exceptions, and that's all these rules kind of have exceptions. So these are generalizations. But the the uh, prehensile tail is one of those that is is quite strict for some reason. They haven't developed. Now it could be because the old world monkeys still come down to the ground. They still move around on the ground. Even the vervet monkeys, as I said earlier, even though it's not, they don't spend much time on the ground. They still will come down to the ground. Whereas some of the South American monkeys are strictly arboreal. They won't, they won't come down to the ground to feed at all. They'll literally live the whole life in the trees. Maybe it has something to do with that. I was trying to think of the colobus that's also found in Africa, the colobus monkeys. I think they're also fairly arboreal, but I'm not sure if they come down to the ground. I'm not too familiar with them. Unfortunately, though, we don't get the colobus here. Find them not further north, the black and white colobus monkeys.
The other monkey that we get here is a Samango monkey. We tend to find that more in the forest down on the the coasts of South Africa. But I think there might be a population in Kruger somewhere. I'm not too sure where in Kruger. I think you can see them in Kruger too. I don't think you really find them this far west of Kruger. Well, it looks like, unfortunately, time has gotten the better of me again. <laughs> and this will be a different troop of monkeys. It will be the same troop from what we saw earlier. There you go, two troops in one morning, making up for lost time. <laughs> Those off fly. But unfortunately we do have to leave them, we do have to get the batteries back on charge so we can get a full drive in this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed seeing Karula being on vacation this morning at Boyatella Lodge. So uh, I'm very glad we were able to tell the staff that she was there otherwise uh, they may have walked into her as they go to clean the rooms so it was quite fun to see her i hope you enjoyed it too and uh, thank you for joining us thank you for all your questions and it always is appreciated i can tell you so if you can join us for our next live safari and that's at three o'clock central africa time where mark will be heading out once again and um, he might go and try and check up on karula he may go out and see something else who knows but try and join him if you can at three o'clock Otherwise, from myself and the rest of the crew, take care and see you again here on Wild Earth. Bye, everybody.